What is going on guys? My name is Family Shucks and welcome back to another video. So in today's episode, I'm going to be talking about why I believe bank stocks in this current economic environment are pretty undervalued, especially if you are a long-term value investor like myself. Um, I don't know everything and I'm not a financial advisor or expert, so make sure to do your own due diligence and if you have a contrary opinion or a supporting opinion with me, make sure to leave it down in the comments down below. But besides that, I think the main reason why I was very much inspired for this video, not only because of a recent stock pick that I recently found and also bought into, but also due to the headlines just as of two weeks ago where Warren Buffett announced that, or he didn't really announce, but it was said that Warren Buffett increased his stake in Bank of America by more than $800 million. And that's a huge thing because Bank of America, as well as other US banks, have been taking a huge hit in this current economic environment. You know, we got lowering interest rates, we got potential defaulted loans, mortgage deferrals, and all that stuff. So overall, the economic environment for banks is looking pretty grim right now. But I think because of that, like Warren Buffett always said, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. So while everyone else is going crazy over tech sectors and tech stocks and all this stuff like AMD, Tesla, etc., if you are someone who is searching more for value, I think that bank stocks are a very excellent play in the next five to 10 years. But I think this announcement by Warren Buffett has had a huge influence over Bank of America's stock appreciation over the past Past couple of weeks as you can see it was kind of announced of his purchases around July 20th so we can say like right here there's been about a 5% growth since those two weeks and compare that to JP Morgan which if we have it in that same time frame around July 20th it actually has a negative depreciation of less than a percent but it still stayed pretty consistent. I think that recent announcement by Warren Buffett has seen at least sparked some interest into Bank of America in terms of their stock with other investors, despite the entire economic shitstorm that is about to happen. But kind of going back to what I was mentioning before about how a lot of people are focusing now on tech sectors like Microsoft, um, AMD, Tesla, really growth stocks in this current period of time. I think a lot of people are overlooking some value plays like banks just because of the overall economic environment. As we know, interest rates are pretty much near zero. There is a bunch of coronavirus payment protection plans for employees or for laid off people in order to support themselves during these rough times. And I think a lot of people have a very negative outlook on these banks because they anticipate these impending losses on their balance sheets, which is actually true. Banks like JP Morgan, Bank of America, etc., they all anticipate these losses to be up on their balance sheets or their PCLs, provisions for credit losses, because of what's going on. And I think because of that, we haven't really seen bank stocks really take off in comparison to growth stocks. And obviously that is the case. And I don't think we'll really see bank stocks take off for maybe another two years, two plus years, just because of how low interest rates are and because of how the economic environment is not really going basically. And not a lot of consumer spending and not a lot of people going back out um, people are still very tentative until there's going to be a vaccine or potential vaccine, hopefully, um, until we see that being released to the public. And I think because of this very fearful consensus around bank stocks and where the economic outlook is going to be for the next year, a lot of people are kind of being short-sighted and not really seeing five to 10 years into the future because eventually interest rates will rise, consumers will go back to spend, businesses will be back and booming. It's just right now, a lot of people aren't seeing that because they're so veiled by this fear of a bearish economy. And I think going back to Warren Buffett's purchases of Bank of America, he is kind of anticipating that where he knows that bank stocks are pretty low value and he wants to increase his stakes in that. So although there hasn't been big headliners and maybe say his increasing stake in JP Morgan, I'm pretty sure he has been doing it. He has been buying 
small shares here and there DCAing into JP Morgan and also Bank of America ever since the drop occurred back in March. And obviously Warren Buffett is pretty smart about that. He's looking 10 plus years into the future where he figures that interest rates will come back up, the economy will go back up because he has such confidence in the US economy and I think we should too. But right now, I don't think a lot of people are paying attention to that, which is why hopefully with this video, you will be looking at bank stocks that could potentially profit you twofold in the next five to ten years. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be talking about two bank stocks that I have in my portfolio, one of which which I added recently as of maybe say a month ago and another that's been in my portfolio for some time. But these are two companies that I'm going to be adding more shares to over the course of time. I'm going to be slowly dollar cost averaging every month, every few weeks here and there whenever I see a dip in price because I have confidence that these banks will do well in the long term and that's my investment horizon very long term not really short term say like one to two years i'm more five to ten plus years because i'm looking at companies that i'm going to hold for the long term and i think so should you the two companies i'm going to be talking about for today is jp morgan chase and co and also toronto dominion bank and their respective ticker symbols are also right next to them and let's just go through a quick breakdown of each of these two stocks so first up we got jp morgan obviously we know that's one of the top banks in the united states a very big investment bank and also it has strong management under Jamie Dimon is currently trading around $96.64 which I think is a very excellent price on which it was trading beforehand before COVID but it also has a PE trailing 12 months of 12.94 earnings per share TTM at around $7.47 and it also has a beautiful dividend of 90 cents per quarter which equates to around $3.80 per year now next up is something that not a lot of people would be looking at because we are in the United States but if you are in Canada you might know of this company very well we got the Toronto Dominion Bank ticker symbol TD is currently trading at around $44.28 now TD is actually one of the top two banks in Canada besides the Royal Bank of Canada now TD tends to trail behind Royal Bank of Canada in the second spot however that doesn't mean it's any less better due to the fact that TD is a retail focused bank I would very much equate it to Bank of America in the United States and Royal Bank of Canada to JP Morgan. But continuing, we got TD with a PE trailing 12 months of 9.8 with an earnings per share TTM of $4.52 and a dividend of 58.15 cents per quarter, which I believe comes to about $2.20 annually, which I think is still a solid dividend and it has seen around an 11% dividend growth over the past 10 years, which I think is really great for this company. Now, I'm not really planning on going too depth into their financial statements and do a financial analysis, but I do want to kind of highlight things on why I believe banks are going to be really solid for this current economic environment and will continue to do well in the long term. So first up, we're going to be looking at JP Morgan and I already know that their balance sheet is strong, that their um, income statement is strong, and everything else is strong about this company, especially management, especially with their growth. There's really no issues in my personal opinion that I see with how JP Morgan is run as a company. But obviously during this economic environment, a lot of people are kind of scared on how these companies are gonna do. And I think that Jamie Dimon has done an excellent job at preparing JP Morgan for the worst. So you can see that right here on the top right that JP Morgan is going to be entering Q3 with a fortress balance sheet of 191 billion of CET1 and 34 billion of reserves. So if you guys don't know what CET1 is, it's basically capital that banks have in order to protect themselves from a financial crisis. And this was kind of set in place ever since the 2008 financial crisis. I think that JP Morgan has done an excellent job at fortressing their balance sheet in order to prepare for the worst. And you can see that their CET1 ratio is around 12%, which on average I think people recommend around 7% so JP Morgan is 5% above the recommended threshold which puts them in an excellent position in case things turn for the worst and obviously as we know looking at Q2 for 2020 they actually beat expected earnings per share at $1.38 which is a huge improvement over their Q1 2020 earnings per share of 78 cents now obviously the thing that we want to keep in mind is the provisions for credit losses right here at around 10.5 billion dollars which is a huge increase over the past couple of quarters so 
Knowing that, we obviously know during this whole environment with potential defaulted loans, mortgages not getting paid, um, and all this stuff, but I think that JP Morgan does have a solid balance sheet in order to protect themselves from this downside. I think as over time, as consumers start to get back out, businesses start to slowly reopen, and then as we see more economic activity happen over the months, the PCL over time will slowly start to reduce. And despite the increase in the PCL, we also do see increasing or at least gradually growth in the net income at 4.6 billion which is a huge increase from its q1 net income of 2.8 billion dollars. So like I said before, bank stocks are going to be a very long term play. It's going to take a while for things to get back to where it was before and also for interest rates to rise. And I think when that time comes, you're going to be seeing some nice profits, especially if you buy in or are considering buying at this current time. So the next company I want to talk about is obviously TD. And this is a Canadian retail focused bank that is also starting to expand in the US, which I think is great for a diverse stream of revenue and also income. But you can see it's kind of heat map on where it has a lot of its locations. It has over 2,300 retail locations in North America, one of the top six banks in the entire North American region. But like I mentioned before, TD is a very retail focused bank. It has Canadian retail, US retail, and also wholesale banking. So it's very focused on their customer, very similar to like Bank of America. And I think they're making great progress in the digital space in order to kind of simplify and improve their customer experience. You can see their Q2 2020 highlights over here. They report an earnings per share of 80 cents in Q2 in comparison to $1.61 in their Q1, which I think is interesting because we saw how JP Morgan reported around uh, $0.78 cents in Q1 and then a dollar something in Q2, but now we kind of have the flip-flop for TD. But I think I'm going to be pretty confident that in Q3, they are going to be reporting a solid EPS over the next two years. But just some more highlights, you can see the revenue is up by 3%, expenses down by 2%. However, Similar to JP Morgan and I would assume like other banks, their PCL has increased tremendously over time, especially in Q2. You can see they reported a PCL of $3.2 billion. I'm not sure whether that's in US or Canadian. However, that is a huge and tremendous increase in comparison to their Q1 for 2020 and also Q2 for 2019. And because of how similar Canada's economic environment is to the United States, that was pretty much expected. But nonetheless, I am still very bullish on banks in general. You can also see right here that I highlighted that TD's CET1 ratio is around 11%, which similar to JP Morgan is very solid. But in the same vein in regards to all bank stocks in this current time period, they're really going to take a hit for the short term. So you can see right here, TD warrants of $800 million of loan loss provisions for their US unit. So the short term outlook for bank stocks is pretty grim. And you have this looming fact of the housing bubble, whether that be in the United States or in Canada, is about to pop. And obviously, with that being said, bank stocks in general are going to be affected by this. There's no question about that. However, because of that, I think banks are worthy of being looked at if you are a long-term investor. Because like they say, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. And as of right now, a lot of people are being fearful about bank stocks. So what I have done and what I kind of recommend if you are in this similar mindset to myself is to open up a small position of your bank of choice and slowly dollar cost average into it over time. Because I think a lot of people have this mindset that yes, the bank stocks are going to be taking a larger hit in a few more weeks or months once basically the housing market and all these loans and all this stuff come crashing down. And I think that is very true. I am still pretty bearish on the entire economy in general. However, this kind of comes into the same vein of timing the market, which is something that I can't do. I don't have a crystal ball in which I can perfectly time on when the bottom is going to hit. And ever since March, the one thing I've learned is to never go against the Federal Reserve. And the same thing can be said about the Canadian government. They're going to be doing everything in their power in order to make sure that nothing crashes, just like 2008. And that's something that I've kind of taken to heart and have taught myself that when I see a discount, I'm just going to take it. And right now, these bank stocks are at a discount. But what is their overall valuation? And to finish it off, I'm going to be leaving you guys with just 
what I believe is the fair value of both JP Morgan and TD. And I'm going to be using my trusty guru focus, which is something that I kind of use in order to calculate the fair value of these stocks. So first up, we're going to look at JP Morgan. Like I said before, they are priced in around $96. And I think as long as JP Morgan stays below $100 and in this mid 90s to kind of maybe hopefully touches upon the high 80s price range, I think it is an excellent buy in order for you to add to your positions or be a solid entry point if you are interested in buying into bank stocks. So as you can see right here, Guru Focus labels JP Morgan's fair value at around $130, which means that at its current price point, it has a margin of safety of around 24%, which I think is a solid margin of safety if you are a long-term value investor. And the last stock I want to look at is TD. So it is currently priced at $44, and I think as long as it stays below this $50 price range, it is an excellent buy. I would highly recommend it. Um, but make sure, like I said before, I'm not a financial expert to do your own due diligence as well, but it has a fair value of $71, which means it has a margin of safety of close to 40% which is a huge discount. And I think for a long-term play, there's really no wrong with investing into companies that have a very solid margin of safety of around 25 plus percent in terms of their margin of safety. Because not only for these two companies are you gonna get excellent value, but you also have solid dividends in order to lower your cost basis and just add to your positions over time. So in the light of my Reddit too long didn't read, a summary recap is that I think as of right now, the economic environment in the United States and in Canada is obviously a shitstorm. Things are not looking good in the short term. However, I think that is an excellent opportunity for you to look into bank stocks and just overall sectors in general that have taken a large hit because you know that over time, the big companies within these sectors are going to survive and profit in the long term. And banks, because of how ingrained they are in their country's economy and also societies, there's no way that these big banks are going to fail because of how integral they are to their economies. So yeah, if you are a long-term investor or just someone who wants to see some solid gains and also solid dividends in these great companies, be sure to check out JP Morgan and also TD Bank. And I'll also be on the lookout for Bank of America once I feel like it's on a sale. That about wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment down below on what your thoughts are for the banking industry and what you see in terms of investing. But thank you guys all for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.